Hi there, I'm Stacy with Shine Mountain Zoo's Adventure Department and we're here with another Abnormally Normal series for you guys. So just because the zoo's closed is closed and the world around us is a little bit abnormal doesn't mean that things around here aren't operating as normal. And one of the things we would have done this week is spring break camp. So again, just because we don't have spring break campers here doesn't mean you can't come to spring break at home. So we're going to talk about a waterproof animal today and I'm going to pass it over to my friend Brittany and she's going to talk to you guys about Ginger the Beaver. Hi, welcome. As Stacy mentioned, my name is Brittany and this is Ginger. Ginger is our American beaver that we have here at the zoo and we're in a special location this week. We're actually inside her beaver dam. She enjoys eating sweet potatoes, so that's what we're feeding her so she can kind of hang out with us a little bit. But we're going to talk about her special adaptations that she has. So if you can see, she has these really large teeth and guess what? They're a little bit orange just like the sweet potato she's eating. So this sweet potato and her teeth are orange, kind of the same color because Ginger has extra iron on the enamel of her teeth. You can see she eats that sweet potato super fast. Can you hear her munching? And then you can also tell that she has these tiny little beady eyes and these tiny little ears. Her eyes and ears can actually close when she goes underwater because she is a semi-aquatic animal. That closure of her eyes and ears allows her to be able to stay nice and waterproof when she's under the water. The other thing you might notice, I don't know if you can see them, are her nice big webbed feet. She actually has webbing on the back of her feet, but not on the front. Her front look a lot like our fingers. So this webbing in the back helps her swim under the water. She also has this really cool tail. Can you see her tail way back here? Her tail is nice and flat and gigantic. She actually uses it for two different purposes. The first one is to slap the water whenever she's frightened or sees danger. This allows her family of beavers to know danger is on its way. The next thing it does is helps her swim through the water. It actually allows her to take different directions and sharp turns, which we aren't able to do with our bodies. She also has this really, really cool set of whiskers up in the front that allows her to capture all of that nice scent. She can't see well, but she has great hearing and she has a great sense of smell. So that helps her survive. So those are great adaptations. She's looking for another sweet potato here, so we'll give her that. But American beavers can get really large. They're actually the second largest rodent um, next to the capybaras, which are the largest rodent. And beavers can weigh up to 70 pounds out in the wild our ginger here is a female, so she's gonna weigh slightly less. She weighs about 40 pounds on a good day. If we give her too much sweet potato, she could weigh up to 45 pounds every now and again. But that's really cool because they're nice and heavy, but that also allows them to defend themselves out in the wild. So that's also another really cool way that they survive. And then she has this really cool waterproof skin. She's actually looking for another sweet potato, so I'll give her that but her waterproof fur and skin is a special adaptation that she has that she shares with other animals like the otters. And so Stacy's gonna tell us a little bit more about that and do an activity with us as well. All right, so like Brittany said, Ginger is one of our waterproof animals and her fur and skin help her be that way. So we're gonna do a little experiment here and learn about how that waterproof fur really works. Um, and all of us have oils in our skin, right? When you put your fingerprints on something, maybe your refrigerator, it makes your mom or dad a little frustrated when you have fingerprints all over the fridge or the windows, but that oil keeps our skin really healthy. Beavers and otters have oil on their fur as well, and that helps keep them waterproof. And the way that works is there's actually a couple different layers. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna test those layers and see how well it works with oily substances. The oils I'm going to use are not the oils found in beavers or otters. Um, we're using a different type of oily substance here, things that you can find around your house. So here's what we're gonna do. We need a couple pieces of fabric, and you can just have two. You don't need to have as many as I have, but I've got a couple going here because we're gonna do a couple different samples. So we have two different layers. The top layer is gonna to pretend to be our um, beaver fur on the outside, and then the second layer is gonna be our insulating layer that helps keep the animal warm. And we're gonna take some um, oils here. So I have baby oil, because that's what we have here at the zoo. Vegetable oil, Crisco, olive oil, any of those things would work as well, but we're gonna try it with a little bit of baby oil. We're gonna put this on our oil one, 
And then I also have a butter one. And that one's gonna be kind of gross, but it's also really fun to apply butter to a piece of fabric here. So I'm gonna separate them at first. And all I'm gonna do is just drizzle a little bit of oil on here. And do our best not to get it all over Ginger's wall. And a little bit of oil here. And I'm just gonna leave that. And then I'm gonna do a butter one too. And I've already prepped one, but this is nice cold butter and we're just going to take a little with our fingers again it's gross but butter is one of my favorite foods i'm not afraid to say so and you're just going to smear it on here so we're going to do a nice insulating or a nice um, waxy layer here it's just going to smear on top and what we're going to do next is we're going to test how waterproof these are so this is just water in a spray bottle and we're gonna spray our nothing one first. We're gonna give it a few, oops, a few little spritzes there. I almost sprayed it all over the place. So just do a couple of spritzes here. And this is untreated. So the thought is, if the top layer gets nice and wet um, from water in a pond or a lake or a river, maybe where you'd find an otter or a beaver, then the bottom layer, see how it's getting starting to get saturated? The bottom layer, oh, I folded it weird, is gonna get wet too. So if we pat that down a little bit, it's starting to come through. You see how it's getting wet there? Now the oil one, this type of oil might make a, make a little bit of um, wetness go through as well, but we're gonna try it. And first you can see that the water, it just beads up on top, but eventually it's also gonna bleed through a little bit. But that oil ultimately, so that dark spot is where the oil is and keeping the water from going through. So that insulating layer underneath is staying mostly dry, right? So the oil works pretty well. Nothing gets it really wet, right? So that beaver's insulating layer, if they didn't have the oil in their fur, they would get nice and wet and that could make them really cold. And then the butter, so again, I have a prepped one here just in case. But with this one, you can see that the water really pools up on top. You can even dump it off. And that layer underneath stays perfectly dry. So I've actually spritzed this one several times while I was practicing. And you can really see that that water is beaded up on top so that it doesn't go through. And beavers and otters actually, when it gets really cold, their bodies can produce a little bit more oil so that that insulating layer stays nice and dry even in the cold uh, months when they're in the water still because they like to swim no matter what. I don't know if we want to pan over to Ginger because she's starting to explore a little bit here. I think she knows we're starting to wrap up so maybe she's trying to do our little finale here with us. But you can really see, if you look closely, you can see where the water is beaded up on Ginger's fur. And again, that's because those oils in there help keep that water from going down and touching her skin. So she can stay nice and warm. It's a little chilly today, but I doubt Ginger is cold at all. She's staying nice and toasty warm. So the next time you're at the zoo, be sure to check out Ginger in her pool area here. When she swims, you can see that water beating up on her. She gets little pools on her back, which is really fun to watch. Um, we also let Ginger just kind of explore. Without guests here, she's a little bit more bold, so that's a really fun thing for her. But she does these walks when guests are around as well. So we'll let her explore a little bit here. So Ginger's a unique beaver too. We let her walk around and she can, she can explore some of these wood pieces here, but Ginger's actually a little bit allergic to wood. So there's only certain woods that she can eat, which is why she makes a great beaver to live at the zoo. If she lived in the wild, she'd probably have some issues with um, finding food. So here she gets things like sweet potatoes and bananas. And all we have to do if she chews a piece of wood that she's not supposed to have, we actually trade her for something that she can have. She likes to trade. So maybe she's doing that to us on purpose. She finds something that she's not supposed to have and then trades it for something pretty fantastic. So if she finds something in here that she shouldn't have, um, Brittany's got some bananas and sweet potatoes ready for her, so that's what she can trade instead. But yeah, that's our um, abnormally normal spring break camp program for today. Again, testing whether or not our animals are waterproof. Ginger is absolutely waterproof. But we hope you stay tuned for our next spring camp series. She's just going to town over there. <laughs> Um, our next one is tomorrow, and it will be all about how snakes shed their skin. So be sure to tune in tomorrow morning and check out our um, spring break presentation on how snakes shed their skin. <laughs>